all right so uh, let us start with the class c in the last class we had completed projectile motion so first uh, all the basics of vectors are also completed within that now we'll start with laws of motion c class when we were doing motion in a straight line and motion in a plane in both of these lessons we just saw that a system was accelerating or a system was moving right a vehicle has started mo uh, moving from rest and then vehicle covers a certain distance and then stops right we didn't study why is the vehicle right a, bo a ball is thrown upwards right with certain angular velocity this with certain angle of projection this and that all this we have seen in the projectile motion what did we notice we just noticed that the projectile moved covered uh, covered its trajectory had a per particular time period drawn a particular range of motion had a maximum height all these things we noticed but why did the motion begin this we didn't discuss when we were talking about motion under gravity that time also we had seen we have dropped a ball gravity is pulling it time of ascent is there time of descent is there that time also we didn't discuss what why is it moving we just discussed among all these that motion is occurring we talked about motion motion in a straight line we talked we talked talked about motion in a plane so two dimensions one dimension both the dimensions we covered but why is the motion occurring this we didn't discuss so your first chapter and second chapter basically your mechanics motion uh, kinematics that deals with just the motion part a body is moving so when the body is moving all the forces that are uh, that time all the acceleration that is occurring all the velocity that is being produced all the displacement that is being covered speed distance all these things are only considered that the body has started motion the body is under motion now what all things are happening when we talk about laws of motion they talk about the underlying mechanism why does the body starts in motion or why does the body stops we saw a question that a car is moving and finally at v velocity it stops so why does it stop that we will see in laws of motion because mainly you are going to deal with the cause laws of motion deals with the cause of motion and the cause of motion is ultimately force these are ultimately forces so we didn't talk about forces till now right velocity velocity is rate of change of displacement acceleration acceleration is rate of change of velocity but we didn't notice why is velocity occurring why is displacement being produced why is the system accelerating so that cause is being dealt in this lesson so all the forces will be introduced to you now c class laws of motion is also a very important lesson because this is totally based upon forces we will start with inertia we will end up to friction we'll cover circular motion also in this lesson only so that it a, a portion of rotational motion is also covered right we'll do all this in this lesson we'll be studying about all the forces frictional forces have to be dealt in detail and class now from now onwards whichever questions you are solving because ultimately in your exam all the lessons will come together so their forces will also be present right so please uh, your concept of mechanics or concept of motion in a straight line motion in a plane does not stop over here you will be having those similar types of question only you studied till acceleration you initially studied displacement then you studied velocity then in your questions acceleration got added up so like this also the questions don't stop over here keep on practicing motion in a straight line motion in a plane because now same questions will be there with an additional component calculate the force acting all right now the first term that is inertia lots of theory portion we'll be doing today because laws of motion first let us try to understand what are the three laws of motion that are given by newton then we'll come to friction force and the rest of it this is not not a very very long lesson but because we'll be doing circular motion here only in this lesson that's why it becomes a link why are we doing circular motion here that i'll tell you that time right now let's focus on the first topic that is inertia so this term was introduced by galileo now what is meant by inertia inertia basically means you are in a state state means a condition condition can be you are at rest a condition can be you are in motion 
right so that is your state so you have the tendency to remain in that state for example if i'm sitting right now i have a tendency to remain at sitting position only if i am walking so i'll have a tendency to keep on walking but does it happen like that are you able to constantly walk all the time are you not able to stop yourself you are able to stop suppose i have rolled a dice or i have rolled a ball rolling a ball is a great example i have rolled a ball on floor ball is rolling 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 initially the ball was at rest the ball was kept on the floor state of rest now i have applied force and i have asked and i have rolled the ball on floor mm -hmm. so external force has occurred my force my force that i have generated in moving the ball in rolling the ball on the floor initially it was at its state of rest so that was its inertia inertia is not a force inertia is a property you know you have a tendency to stay at rest that is that property you no know, that tendency that is called inertia don't think inertia is the force acting inertia is not a force it's just a term it's just a term to denote the property or the tendency so it due to inertia of rest the ball was kept at rest but my external force the external force means what external force means that is not a part of your system some my system right now is the ball and the ground now apart from the forces that ball and ground will exert any other force that will occur in nature that will be the external force so if external force is occurring let me tell you first the concept of external force see suppose uh, i have taken a glass of water this is kept on a table so glass of water plus table this is my system under consideration right now all right class right now i am just focusing on this glass of water kept on the table so for me just my system right now is this table plus glass of water this is my system system is what area under consideration when we will be doing uh, thermodynamics that time this will be clear otherwise you will do this in chemistry also states of matter may be aata hai system and surround that's i think in class 11th only so this is area under consideration or observation fine now anything that is apart from this anything in the whole universe apart from this glass of water and this table for me that time becomes my surrounding so suppose if this is a glass of water kept it is kept on this one force acts that we will be talking about that is normal reaction that will be occurring this glass is kept on table we have studied we uh, yes we have seen mg this will keep on acting weight gravitational force will keep on acting so see these are the forces that are occurring within the system only right the table is exerting a normal reaction the gravitational force of the glass is pulling it downward so this is a system internal forces so these forces that are present within the system and are acting these are what these are external ex uh, internal forces sorry these forces which are acting within the system like the normal reaction the gravitational force these are the internal forces now suppose i have applied a force and i have thrown this glass because of the force that i have applied the glass felt and the water spilled so this force that occurred this was the external force or suppose i have dragged this glass because i am not the part of system right now so that becomes external force so external forces and internal forces we clear because this will come and system and surrounding all these terms will come fine so that is what is meant by uh, be, uh which i was talking about in inertia see a ball was at its state of rest i have applied the force and rolled the ball so external force is occurring which is changing its state of rest right so it otherwise if i didn't apply the force and the ball was kept on ground all the forces were balanced it will keep on staying at rest that is known as inertia once the ball has stopped uh, started rolling then it has a tendency to keep on rolling 
it's actually the friction force that stops it if there is no friction in our system no in the universe suppose let's suppose it that there is no frictional force the ball will never stop because it has a property to never stop until external force acts that is inertia of motion right so let's discuss the term was introduced by galileo in ability this is actually the definition this has been marked separately because in the exam you have to write this definition inability of the body to change to its state of rest or uniform motion by itself inability it is not able to change by itself it's a property of the body not force please mention it here carefully that it's not a force and inertia depends on the mass inertia depends on the mass if it's a very huge object inertia will be right it will have a tendency to stay at rest more if a big box is kept and a small ball is kept big box will have the tendency to remain at its state because a lot of force will be required to move it so that's why inertia is high it depends upon the mass of the body now coming to newton's first law because this is newton's first law is also known as law of inertia this is completely linked with inertia that's why i'm doing it together this is known as law of inertia also this means what this is exactly what i told you this actually introduced the concept of force this is the first law in mechanics that you understand and use the term force see body will maintain its inertia unless and until external force is applied on the body this which i was telling you that if a ball is kept on the floor ball has a tendency to stay on the ground forever it won't move But right now ball and the ground this is a system for me if i am kicking the ball for example so the push that i am applying that push that force that becomes the external force because i am not a part of system that time so until and unless external force is applied then only inertia is maintained or for example a moving ball is there a ball is moving on the ground i have using my i have put my foot on the ball so it's my pressure that is being applied it's the force that i am applying on the ball to stop it so it initially had the tendency to keep on rolling so that is its tending inertia of motion so body will maintain its inertia unless and until external force is applied on the body this is exactly the statement of newton's first law an external force can change inertia of body for example state of rest to state of force. just see the types of inertia understand the types of inertia see first is inertia of rest for example this which i was telling you ball is kept on ground this is ball this is ground it all the forces are balanced normal reaction gravitation force all the forces are balanced it's not moving it's still so it will keep on remaining like this it won't move it will be just like this and what this is inertia of rest and what does newton's first law says that if you apply any force this will change its state of rest so it will become in motion or it will change its direction or something then second inertia of motion body tends to maintain state of motion for example if a ball is moving or if a ball is rolling it will keep on moving unless and until you have stopped or some other external force has stopped it like sometimes if you keep uh, if you roll a ball at a certain distance it will stop by itself so by itself actually doesn't mean that the ball is stopping by itself it means some other external force is stopping it if it stop it means it's a frictional force that is stopping it so frictional force we have in detail that's why i'm not discussing it so much this is state of motion then also it has a uh, inertia of direction is also there that in absence of external force body will move in a straight line for example a car is there car is moving in a straight line if suppose some external force occurs it can happen that it turns its path and goes into circular motion for example accident occurs another car has banged it so the force exerted by the other car has led the car to slip which allowed it to move in a circular path so there is a change of direction from straight line to circular path that is inertia of direction had there not been an external force which was provided by the bang of the other car this car was having a tendency to keep on moving in a straight line all right so this is what is the entire concept of inertia note down all these things 
may from a fresh page uh, start this lesson chapter 5 laws of motion then we'll discuss momentum that also comes under your first law
class written? Yes. All right. Now let's start with momentum. So this is clear inertia, inertia and Newton's first law. See, momentum is also a part of first law only. Now understand momentum clearly because uh, after momentum only we'll be able to understand second law and second law is also very important. See, amount of motion in the body is known as momentum. Um, amount of motion means tendency to move is gained a lot by the body. For example, if I say, uh, if you have seen people racing, so when they are running, even after crossing the finishing line, they are, they are running, uh, they are able to run for a few seconds more because they have gained so much momentum while running that the amount of, it means the amount of motion in them is uh, left is so much that even when they have to stop after finishing, uh, crossing the finishing line, they are able to move. All right, so that is because of momentum. The momentum that has been gained by each player is so much that they have a tendency to cross the line and then even after that. So that's amount of motion in the body. Now see, momentum is den denoted by the symbol P and it's the product of mass into velocity. One more definition of momentum can be it's the product of mass and velocity. This is also how you define it. Amount of motion in the body. Product of mass and velocity. So what is P? P is the momentum. M is the mass of the body. V is the velocity of the body. So it's a vector quantity, vectors and scalars we have discussed. So if it's a vector quantity, it means you have to keep all the directions in mind, right? You have to apply parallelogram law, if required, triangle law, polygon law, any. It's a vector. Either you can use Cartesian form of vector or polar form of vectors. All these things we have discussed in detail so much. So it's a vector quantity. Why we are specifying it over here? Because if a question comes on momentum, then you have to keep the sign conventions. You cannot just solve it literally, right? It's a vector quantity. Direction is same as that of velocity. If, for, for example, a vehicle is moving uh, in the north direction and the velocity is acting in the north direction. So momentum will also act in the north direction. Why? Because see, momentum is mass into velocity. Mass is a scalar quantity. This has no direction. Velocity is a vector quantity. So this directly is proportional to velocity. SI unit. See, what is the SI unit of mass? Yes, class. Anyone? SI unit of mass? Kg meter per second. Kg. Very good, Shaista. So this is meter per second. So entire will become kg meter per second. Good. Mass into velocity. Kg meter per second. For example, just look at this. A very basic, easy question. Body of mass 10 kg is moving with a velocity of 5 meter per second. Calculate its momentum. This is mass into velocity. 10 into 5. So that becomes 50 kg meter per second. Very basic, easy formula based question. Okay, um, we'll start with Newton's uh, second law, but first you write down till here. Momentum, when momentum changes, inertia is also changed. All right, if uh, because see, because of momentum only, no, you are able to change. For example, uh, that I was telling you, um, the, the player was to stop at the finishing line, right? So the player had to come at state of rest, inertia of rest, but because momentum was changing, that is momentum was increasing so much, so the inertia changed from state of rest, it began, uh, became into state of motion. So momentum changes inertia, all right? And in when the momentum is changing, the external force is not zero. This point will be clear in the next section, Newton's second law of motion. First, note down momentum, basic formula, then I'll discuss Newton's second law. Make the heading momentum. So in your exam, you have to write this definition and this definition if it comes.
done class see coming to i hope nobody is writing if anyone is writing please stop me now see coming to second's law uh, newton's second uh, law of motion see this actually tells you we have studied momentum now when what did i tell you when we were doing mechanics uh, kinematics i told you that when something changes with respect to time we call it as rate like if displacement is getting changed over a particular time we call it rate of change of displacement that is velocity or if velocity is changing with respect to time that is acceleration we call it rate of change of velocity so what is rate of change of momentum if the momentum is also changing with respect to time right if the momentum is changing with respect to time so change in momentum over time is called force so second newton's second law of motion is in relation to measure force external force acting on a body is equal to its rate of change of momentum let's say delta p that is this is the change in momentum delta t is the change in time so f external will be delta p over delta t delta p is p final minus p initial change in time is final time minus initial time so this is what this will give you the average force remember this is a similar manner where we calculated the speed and average speed and average acceleration i'll repeat it again when do you calculate average when you have a particular duration you have an initial time you have a final time you have a duration from 2 seconds to 3 seconds from 8 seconds to 12 seconds from 3 pm to 4 pm right you have a particular duration then you use average force you use the subtractions basically you subtract and use it. or you can do you can differentiate also instead of dividing it you can also differentiate by how this will give you instantaneous force this will give you instantaneous force this you use when you are having a particular time seconds like calculate the force at t is equal to 0.039 seconds a very particular time instant you are having not duration is not a duration is given at t is equal to 2 seconds like this a particular instant is being present that time you calculate it now see class if mass uh, here this is the instant force so what all things you are having over here just remember when you are calculating average right whenever you are calculating average average is for duration and instantaneous this is for time instant anyways coming to f is equal to dp over dt see if f is equal to dp over dt you can write the formula of momentum as mv over dt right if mass is remaining constant if mass is constant so this becomes when you are differentiating this becomes m dv over dt can any one of you tell me what is this dv over dt acceleration very good shai so this is acceleration this is acceleration so what ultimately do we have now f external the external force is mass into acceleration a very basic formula you have and it's actually the newton's second law of motion this is newton's second law of motion that force is mass into acceleration force this starts with this force is rate of change of momentum so again acceleration is and yes this is important mass has to remain constant this condition no this has to be this is important for the usage of this formula otherwise you have to use this mass is constant then only no you are able to bring it out of it so it's a vector quantity si unit of force we are talking about force so si unit of force this is newton you will see symbol n written over 
anywhere. So it's like seven Newton, five Newton, like this you will find. And CGS unit is dyne. So one Newton is equal to 10 to the power five dyne. Let's practice some questions on this. First, write it down. Let us practice some questions. Till now, is it clear? Lena, you're able to understand? Yes. Okay. Shaista, Khudeja, Khadija, clear? Yes, ma'am. Abdul?
this question says a body starts from rest and attains a velocity of 10 meter per second in 5 seconds. Mass of body is 5 kg. You have to calculate the force. See, force is equal to F is equal to MA. So, mass we know. But do we know the acceleration for calculation? No. So, we do not at the first place have idea about acceleration. Initial velocity, we know it's zero. Velocity is 10 meter per second. Time is given as five seconds. So, at least we can use the uniformly accelerated motion equation to find out acceleration. This is zero. So, 10 is equal to A into five, right? So, uh, acceleration will become 10 by 5, acceleration is 2 meter per second squared. So, force will become 5 into 2, force is 10 newton. Note it down. One more question we'll see.
a scooterist moving with a speed of 36 km per hour sees a child standing in the middle of road he applies the brakes and brings the scooter to rest in 5 seconds just in time to save the child you have to calculate the retarding force on the vehicle if the mass of the vehicle plus driver is given as 300 kg see mass is given time is given velocity is given it's a similar question it's just that velocity is in uh, kilometer per hour 36 kilometer per hour so how do we convert it into meter per second multiplied by 5 by 18 that becomes 2 2 into 5 is 10 meter per second so v is equal to u plus 80 it says final velocity brings the scooter to rest means finally the scooter stops so final velocity is zero initial velocity initial velocity is 10 meter per second acceleration we have no idea time is 5 seconds so this becomes zero is equal to 10 plus a into 5 So acceleration is ten divided by five, which is equal to sorry. This is minus ten divided by five, which is equal to minus two meter per second squared. Why is it coming negative? Because this is a retarding force that is occurring. Velocity of the body is decreasing. Negative acceleration, retardation is occurring. So that's why this is not acceleration. This is retardation. Force is equal to mass into acceleration. Mass is three hundred kg. Acceleration is minus two, so force is equal to minus six hundred newton. Force can be negative because this is a vector quantity. Note down the solution. Uh, see, Khudeja, initial velocity is already given in the question. It is saying a scooterist moving with a speed of thirty-six kilometer per hour. It's just that this is in kilometer per hour, so we have converted into meter per second. 
So initial velocity is given. Final velocity we have found using the fact that the body comes back to at rest. So that's why this is zero and this is 10 meter per second. Okay, class, in the next class, we'll continue the rest of it. Uh, in pulse, we have to start. Newton's third law of motion, we'll start. So that we'll continue in the next class. So you people have your test tomorrow, revision test, which couldn't happen last week. Units and dimensions and motion in a straight line. So prepare for it tomorrow. Please attempt it. I'll discuss the questions in the next class. Thank you so much. All those who have written till here, you people can start leaving. Thank you.